Hey guys, today we're gonna look at the Edifier Neo Buds Pro 2. In terms of specs and features, this seems to be very competitive with popular earbuds in the budget range, like the Soundcore Liberty 4NC, which has a larger battery tank, yes, but the Neo Buds Pro 2 supports the latest version of the Hi-Res LH DC audio codec and spatial audio with head tracking. Unlike the Soundcore, which only supports spatial audio, what they call 3D surround and no head tracking. Now, I think it's very interesting that the Edifier supports head tracking because this isn't something you see often in the budget range so far. As far as I know, only the Neo Buds Pro 2 has head tracking in the budget category, but this is something that I'm going to go into a little bit deeper later on because the way Edifier implements head tracking is a little different from other earbuds that do support head tracking in the more premium range like the AirPods Pro 2. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to see how the Neo Buds Pro 2 performs in terms of active noise cancelling, call quality and sound compared to the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. And after that, we're going to talk about some pros and cons as usual. Links in the description if you want to check the latest prices of these earbuds. And if you want to see more reviews from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. But right now, we're going to compare their mic pickup in both quiet and noisy conditions using some really loud cafe noise and some wind noise coming from this fan. I am now making a phone call in a quiet place using the Edifier Neobuds Pro 2. I am now making a phone call in a quiet place using the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. I am now making a phone call in a noisy place using the Edifier Neobuds Pro 2. I'm now making a phone call in a noisy place using the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Well, from what I'm seeing here, it appears that the Neo Buds Pro 2 has better noise reduction capabilities than the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. It's also much more effective at rejecting wind noise during phone calls. In quiet conditions though, I think the sound calls sound a bit louder and a little more full in terms of my voice reproduction. The Neo Buds active noise cancelling is also pretty good and I'm talking about when it's on max settings, using it in the real world, they were one of the more effective ones in the budget range at dumping down background chatter in noisy cafes and also the rumble of the subway train on my daily commute. That being said, the sound cores were a little more quiet, but not by a whole lot, maybe a couple of dBs quieter. I mean, have a listen to the samples recorded under the same background noise as before. If you want to compare their active noise cancelling and call quality to other earbuds, do become a member for $1 per month or more. This gives you full access to my personal comparison tool which you can use to compare earbuds A to B at your own time and at your own pace. Many people have joined up, especially people who can't simply visit a store anytime to compare earbuds. They know that this is going to save them so much time, being able to just cut through all the marketing and compare these earbuds remotely without visiting a store. So become a member like them, click on the link below to find out more. Its transparency mode does amplify surrounding noise pretty well with a good dose of amplification in the mid-range so I was able to converse with people properly and its wind noise reduction mode is effective at cancelling the flapping noise from wind. Pretty good. I'm not sure though if it will be as effective in more challenging scenarios like using it on a motorbike but it was able to deal with sudden gusts of wind when I'm walking down the streets. The same goes for the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. I think its transparency mode is also pretty usable, quite comparable to the Neobus Pro 2. 
in terms of sound quality, the new Buzz Pro 2 sounded quite thumpy and crisp, especially in the mid-range frequencies where the vocals are, so they do sound pretty good. That being said, they are not as bassy as the Liberty 4 NC, and the new Buzz Pro 2 do also sound darker in the sound stage compared to the sound cores, not as vibrant or sizzly. I mean, listen to the following sound samples featuring this channel's favorite song. If you want to compare their sound quality to buds from other brands, visit loudandwireless.com's sound samples page, link in the description. Otherwise, if you were to compare them side by side on their default tunings, their sound profiles are quite similar in terms of clean track separation, sound staging, dynamic range, and playing with the EQ settings in the Edifier app, it is actually possible to tweak the new Buds Pro 2 to sound similar to the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. If I simply max out the bass and bump up the 10 kHz band a bit. Now, in a sense, the Edifier app does provide more leeway into which frequency bands to target and the Q factor that you can apply. But if you're a man in the street who doesn't know what Q factor is or which frequencies do what, you might find it easier to work with the Soundcore app's vast range of EQ presets or even have the app auto-calibrate the best sound quality for your tastes using your ID. On the other hand, the new Buds Pro 2 has only a few audio presets, one called Classical, one Dynamic, and the third is called Spatial Audio with Head Tracking. This is probably, like I said, the first budget earbuds that I've seen that has head tracking sensors in the earbuds. So when you're watching videos on, say, your phone, you can pin the audio in place to make it sound like you're listening from large stationary speakers. This works with any phone on any app, you just have to calibrate it first in the Edifier app. However, it's self-tracking, so it doesn't actually sense where your phone is and adjusts accordingly like the AirPods. So if your phone's in a different position from when you last calibrated, you'll have to recalibrate head tracking so that the sound is pinned in the correct position. Now, there are more premium earbuds in the market with head tracking that does this automatically, but if you don't want to spend premium money, the new Buds Pro 2 is the most accessible way to experience earbuds head tracking for yourself. Now, I also like the fact that you can select directly what grade of high-res codec streaming you want from the app instead of forcing it through developer's settings. Another reason to get the new Buds Pro 2 instead of the sound cores is its fit. To me, it's a lot more snug than the Liberty 4 NC. It locks in better, so it doesn't lose ANC power as easily. It's also got a wider range of ear tips included in the box to fit different sizes of ears. Having said that, if we were simply talking about user experience in general, the sound core is better. It's got multi-point pairing, a larger battery, so you don't have to charge the buds or the case as often. Its app is more polished, more feature-rich, it lets you fine-tune your sound and noise cancelling in a more granular way. In fact, the Soundcore app remains one of Soundcore's biggest strengths compared to other budget brands, and this happens to also include Edifier. Another area, the New Buds Pro 2 could be better is in terms of its controls. You can customize them, but only the double and triple tap gestures. When I was testing it, it didn't even seem to support single tap at all. So you can only access up to four different commands at any time. Whereas the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC has double that number of possible commands. Single tap, double tap, triple tap, and tap and hold gestures. So 
pretty much every command can be done from the earbuds, like pause play, volume up, down, skip tracks, noise cancelling toggles. So as far as user experience goes, I am leaning more towards the sound quality for NC. So those are the pros and cons of the Edifier Neo Buds Pro 2 compared to the Soundcore Liberty 4NC. Neo Buds Pro 2 is not perfect, yes, but I think there's a lot going for it, especially if head tracking is something that you are interested in experiencing but you don't want to pay premium money. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you want to see more comparisons like this one and get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified of new content. I'm also on Twitter where I tweet about random stuff, stuff that I'm interested in, passionate about, so do follow me there and click here for my take on the first gen Neobuds Pro.